Greetings, my name is Professor Stephen Nall, and I shall be your instructor for this unit, which is titled Genre, Kinds of Writing in Humanities and Theology. The purpose of this session is to enhance your ability to read appreciatively, particularly in the humanities, which would include areas such as literature, history, theology, and law. In order to do research in any field, you need to read well, to use existing patterns of vocabulary, grammar, sentences, and paragraphs, so as to be understood by your academic peers. As a citizen, a parent, a Christian, you should understand other people's thoughts and to express your own. The only way to do this is to read, read, read. In past generations, the first readers, Abbasomi, turned to the Bible, the Word of God. The Bible taught them not only how to read and write, but how to think about matters of love, truth, righteousness, and salvation through faith in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. So this seminar uh, will be looking at writings from the Bible and other classic texts. In particular, we shall be considering the topic genre. Genre is an imported French word, which means writings of a similar kind, class, form, or style. We shall be looking at six genres of writing, narrative, wise sayings, lyric poetry, description, oratory, and dialectic. I have included two examples of each genre. For reasons of time, I shall not discuss them all. When you review, please read all the texts and questions found in your course folder. Narrative tells a story, and a story include facts and interpretation. Historical narrative is a report of an actual event. It combines the fact, the event, and the historian's interpretation. The Bible contains two accounts of King Josiah's death, the same event with different interpretations. The Book of Kings portrays Josiah as a godly king whose good was canceled out by the evils of his predecessor, Manasseh, while the Book of Chronicles attributes Josiah's death to his own fault in not heeding the warning of his opponent, Pharaoh Necho of Egypt. Fictional narrative also tells a story which may or may not be based in history or biography. In fiction, the author's interest is in the imagined characters and what they might have thought or done. This allows the author to shape and craft the plot and characters more freely than in historical narrative. The story in Timothy Wangusa's on this mountain portrays a boy's fantasy of a romantic meeting with a schoolmate, only to discover her being seduced by the school chaplain. The boy, Mambu, thinks of two lovers from Shakespeare, Jessica and Lorenzo, whom he had been studying. But he finds out fiction and reality are not the same. There is a kind of folk wisdom which you may not learn in school, but from your elders, like the Proverbs on this slide. Jesus also taught wisdom through parables, like the one here about the workers in a vineyard. Many wise sayings have a surprise element that make you think. In this case, the master paid the early and late workers the same contract wage. How would you feel in this situation? 
if you were the early worker, if you were the late worker. What is Jesus' larger point about the kingdom of God? Let's now turn to lyric poetry. <clears throat> Poems, like songs, can convey various moods. In the case of Shakespeare's Sonnet 73, the mood is sadness or melancholy about approaching old age. Here's the first uh, stanza. That time of year thou mayst in me behold when yellow leaves or none or few do hang upon those boughs which shake against the cold, bare ruined choirs where late the sweet birds sang. While Africans living at the equator may have to imagine what the autumn means, they can certainly grasp the other two stanzas, images of the setting of the sun and the dying out of a campfire. Just as wise sayings often have a moral, this sonnet ends with a two-line couplet, it's called, which says that love is made stronger because it comes to an end. Great authors, like great painters, have an eye for detail, and they have an ear for the right word to describe it. Description can apply to scenes in the wild or in the city. Writers can describe how people look and how they feel. In the book of Job, Job complains that God does not care for him. God suddenly appears in a whirlwind and begins describing his game park with wonderful animals, mountain goat, donkey, wild ox, hawk, warhorse, and even a silly ostrich. God is saying to Job indirectly, if I delight in all these creatures, Job, don't you think I delight in you? Oratory is persuasive speech appealing to the will. The primary instrument of oratory is rhetoric. Politicians and preachers both use a pulpit to reach people. Martin Luther King Jr. was both a preacher and a political activist. It was my great privilege as a teenager to hear Dr. King give his famous, I have a dream speech. I urge you to listen to the speech first in order to be moved by the power of his rhetoric as well as his message of liberty. Oratory is one-way speech. Dialectic uh, employs questions between two or more dialogue partners. The Greek philosopher Socrates made dialectic famous by questioning orators and exposing the inadequacy of their claims to truth. The greatest dialogue in history was between the Roman governor Pontius Pilate and Jesus, who was being tried for claiming to be king of the Jews. Jesus' reply to Pilate leaves him confused and asking, what is truth? Dialogue between two persons can also lead to mutual understanding and ultimate reconciliation, whether in politics or the workplace or the home. What Dr. King achieved for racial reconciliation by oratory, Nelson Mandela achieved through dialogue with Prime Minister F.W. de Klerk in South Africa. I hope this brief introduction to genre in reading and writing will be helpful to you in your academic work and indeed in other areas of your life. Let me encourage you to read, 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 and do so with joy. God bless you.